week at this same time over these same stations, the makers of mobile gas and mobile oil bring you Arthur Wells. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've been in the habit before the show starts of doing a few magic tricks, and we're on the air now, but uh, I think we've got time for one little tiny mystical experiment. Now, I, there's one thing I think I ought to warn you. A lot of radio programs hold up signs telling you when to laugh and when to applaud. We don't do anything as vulgar as that. <laughs> However, at the end of each joke, an ice pick will come up to the center of each seat. <laughs> You may regard that as a hint. <laughs> For my first effect, I will use an ordinary pack of playing cards and an ordinary member of the audience. Now, I have been accused by a lot of people of using Confederates or plants. I make a standing offer of $10,000 to anybody who can prove to me that I use a Confederate. Now, I'd like anybody from the audience that all you says, thank you very much for volunteering. You step up on the stage, please. Don't be nervous. Now, sir, just step right over here. I've never seen you before, have I? No, boss. <laughs> The offer held good until midnight last night. <laughs> now, I want you to take any card at all, sir. Any card at all. Not that one. <laughs> Just select a card, sir. Just select an ordinary playing card. When you look at the card, remember it, please, and tell me what it is. Press you nine two nine one one. Ask for... Uh, that's all, brother. That's all, brother. How did that get in the day? Hello? Yeah? What? She packed everything and left. She didn't even leave a note. Now, don't get panicky, dear. We'll get another maid. Anyway, who did the housework before we had a maid? That's right. I can do it again. <laughs> the cook is complaining, too. The cook, she doesn't like my work. Why, I iron beautifully. Oh, her thing. Well, I can't help it. The iron catch isn't that lazy stuff. <laughs> now, look, dear. You keep the cook from quitting. I'll get another maid. Goodbye. Where's my assistant, Mr. Gristlehorn? Oh, no, no, no. I don't do that kind of work. Besides, I've got dishpan hands. Look at them. See what I mean? Well, you, you shouldn't bang them together that way. It chips off the enamel. Uh, call the times for me, Miss Gristlehorn. Yes, Mr. Bell. Well. find out who hired that maid Beulah away from us. I'll take it up with the OPA. Hello? Times, I want to insert an ad. $50 reward for information leading to the whereabouts of a maid, experienced or inexperienced, part-time or full-time, male or female, young or old, dead or alive. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Wells, Miss Mary Boland to see you. Oh, ask her to come in right here. I'd like uh, our listeners to know that I agree with them about our guest tonight. Mary Boland is one of the finest comedians in all the world, and here she is, everybody. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. I've gotten the most wonderful maid. She never complains about the toast being cold <laughs> when I bring her her breakfast in bed. Well, how did you get her? Oh, she was very unhappy in her previous job. It seems she worked with some... Uh, I, I, I don't remember his name. An actor who was always doing card tricks. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know, often she tells me such interesting things about his home life. Miss Boland, the OPA doesn't approve... Tells you such interesting things about his home life. Yes, yes. The other day, she heard him saying, Darling, you're wonderful. You're, you're charming. Well, what's wrong with a man saying that? He was looking in the mirror. <laughs> oh, and here's something else. Whenever he comes into the house, he sprinkles a handful of confetti, and all the servants have to applaud. <laughs> Excuse me, Master, the man who gives you the reducing treatments. Well, oh, my trainer sent him an excuse me, Mary. See, Francois works only by appointment. Ah, oh, bonjour, 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 Monsieur Wells. You've been taking the exercises. What did you do when you got up this morning? Well, I got out of bed, reached for the floor, picked up one leg, picked up the other leg, and then I lifted. <laughs> Monsieur, that is very useless exercise. Oh, really? Can you tell me another or better way of getting... Your pants on? <laughs> oh, monsieur, he makes the joke. <laughs> yes, he loses the place, too. <laughs> oh, but that is very, 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 very... <laughs> that is very, 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 very funny. I do not think so. Come on, we we'll give the treatment. Sit down on this overstuffed sofa. <laughs> I beg your pardon. 
Oh, Francois, please. This is Mary Boland. Madame, I should be there. No, to... you don't. I've already reduced. Oh, look. Here's a picture of me when I was really plump. Hmm, you were a trifle, uh, buxom. Mm. Who is that standing in back of you? Uh, nobody. That's still me. <laughs> oh, I'm in good physical trim, but I need a good cook. Oh, Francois, hmm? do you cook? Oh, but with gas. However, I'm committed to Monsieur Wells. <laughs> Well, that's not very funny, I don't think. Um, uh, what is Mr. Wells? If I thought it was funny, I would have said it. <laughs> Papa, what does Mr. Wells pay you a week? Oh, uh, thirty-five dollars, three cans of mobile gas, and a pass to Jane Eyre at my neighborhood beach. <laughs> oh, I pay my cook fifty dollars. Of course, we don't have a mobile gas pump, but we do have a cellar where you can get lubricated at any time. <laughs> this has gone far enough, Francois. I'll see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, it's drama time on your radio almanac. We bring you now Lassie in the Dark with Ginger Boland. The scene. The editorial offices of that chic fashion magazine for women, Vogel. Vicky Vogel, that glamorous career woman, is talking to her assistant. Oh, Michelle? Yes, Vicky. <laughs> I'm so confused, Michelle. Do you think I need to be psychoanalyzed? Well, psychiatry is a wonderful science, dear. And rather interesting, too. Unlocking the door to a person's mind. Yes, but for sheer excitement, do you think it will ever replace the old fashioned keyhole? <laughs> Did you hear that? No, what? The strangest noises go on in my head. I must do something about that rattling in my head. I think I'll drop it and see my chiropractor. Chiropractor? Yes, yes, you know. A man who gets paid for whatever men get slapped for. <laughs> Well, darling, you do need a psychiatrist, and I know one who's simply wonderful, Dr. Precox. Oh, don't be absurd. Well, there's nothing wrong with my mind. <laughs> Just something loose in my head. Come right in, madam. Oh. How are you, Dr. Precox? Not so good. I haven't been feeling myself lately. Oh, what seems to be the trouble, Doctor? Well, I don't know. I've been feeling faint lately. I, I get dizzy spells and peculiar headaches. <laughs> there it goes again. Did you ever get that feeling? Uh, yes, but uh, mine has a cowbell in it. <laughs> need a change of scene, Doctor. Oh, do you think that'll help? Well, if it doesn't... Uh, oh, try some of these goopy pills I've been taking. Thanks, I will. That'll be five dollars, please. <laughs> uh, now, what seems to be your trouble, madam? Well, well, half the time, Doctor, I don't know whether I'm me or Ginger Rogers. And when I think I'm Ginger Rogers, I, I die. I die. <laughs> like this. <laughs> Then I know it's me. <laughs> you better tell me something about your background, madam. Any sanity in your family? <laughs> well, I remember my father. He used to sit for hours in the living room and spin yarns. <laughs> and then sometimes he, uh, he used to just sit <laughs> and the living room would spin. <laughs> I see. Tell me, madam, do you have any hobbies? Do you like music? Oh, I love you. You do? Uh, oh, yes. Some of my favorite songs are music. Some of your favorite? <laughs> I think. <clears throat> Just one thing more. Have you ever knowingly done anything you weren't supposed to? Yes. Yes, I have. I'm being punished. Oh, I'm, I know it. Calm yourself, madam. What was it you did that you shouldn't do? Oh, how was I to know? I was just a girl. No names, please. <laughs> there, there, you can tell me. You can tell me. Well, you know those 
chewing gum machine for sale. Put so pull. Yeah. I pulled. Oh, now, you mustn't blame yourself for a mistake made in childhood. I, too, have heard. After all, man is a creature of primitive emotions. <laughs> the best of us are none too strong. <laughs> the flesh is weak. Do you hear me? The flesh is weak. Pardon me. Hello? Really? Best performance you ever heard? As good as you could have done? Oh, thank you. Who was that? Vitamin Flintheart. <laughs> Uh, now, my dear, I'm going to solve all your difficulties. I'm going to hypnotize you. Look me in the yolks of the eyes. Repeat after me. Ali Gazam. Ali Gazam. Sim Sam Halabam. Sim Sam Halabam. L.S. M.F.T. <laughs> L.S. M.F.T. I must sleep. I must sleep. I must sleep. I must sleep. <laughs> She's fast asleep. No, I'm not. You are. And you do as I command. Yes, master. I'm speaking to you. You, Mary Boland, pick up that telephone, call your home, and fire your maid. Yes, master. You don't have to dial the phone, hypnotize. Uh, thank you. Hello? Eula? Oh, you're the best maid I ever had, Eula. But you got along so well with the cook at that actor's house, you know. I think what... Oh, that's... Fine. Goodbye. Everything all settled now? Yes, yes. My maid got a cook for me from those same people. An American pilot takes off from England. His destination, Berlin. His assignment, to drop just a few bombs, only enough to challenge German pilots into combat. Because current brilliant strategy is this. To make invasion possible, the German Air Force must be knocked out first. Flying horsepower is helping to do that job. This sensational super fuel is in that fight, bringing brand new power ingredients to aviation gasoline. Today our planes are going farther, climbing higher, carrying heavier bomb loads than ever before. The makers of mobile gas are producing this miracle fuel right here in California, in the town of Torrance. And this plant is only one to share in their vast $90 million program, the greatest catalytic cracking program in the world. After victory, you'll have flying horsepower for your car, and you'll enjoy new motoring pleasure. Flying horsepower is going to mean flash getaway dynamic power response. It's coming in mobile gas at the sign of the flying red horse. <laughs> Almanac, ladies and gentlemen, the birthday department, the painter Goya, the writer Gogo, and the clarinetist Goodman were all born this week. Also, Edmund Rostand, the French dramatist. By way of celebration, we bring you now a scene or two from his most famous play, Cyrano de Bergerac. <laughs> Cyrano was a poet, a satirist, and a swordsman. He lived in the days of the musketeers, and he will never die. He had the biggest nose that ever sniffed at pomp and circumstance, and a heart to match. Above everything, he was incorruptible. We have a slight acquaintance, Monsieur de Bergerac. Not slight enough, Comte de Guiche. I am here as a servant of his majesty, who has fallen under your spell, Desires that you adorn his court. A promotion? At least a title. The king desires you as a friend, as verse maker extraordinary, and as. Court jester? I'm grateful to His Majesty for his office, sir. Not but... so quickly, sir, no. There's fame and fortune and greatness in it for you. I have not only considered, but found my rhyme and meter for His Majesty's tender ear. Write verses for a king. Sign my name to drooling flattery. You call that fame? You call that greatness when men of letters toadies and smirk before their social betters? Bow themselves silly at every dinner board? Grin like a dying horse at every lord? Scratches the back of every pompous ass? 
who comes to see their play on a critic's path. The devil take those geniuses who learn the dainty ways of serving men, who turn their talent into little fireworks for garden fates, and sweat with quips and quirks to cheer a pack of fancy dullards up and bring their nosegay epigrams to sup in palaces. Know this. I'll never wear my stomach out by crawling on it there. I'll know no master be three times crowned. My white plume sweeps the sky and not the ground. And only where I want to be, there am I found. I'll whistle in the wind, half-cocked, and kick stones as I walk, laugh like a lunatic, growl, guzzle, belch, whene'er I want, and scribble, if not great epics, never servants dribble. If ever fortune comes to seek my shelf, it shall not come from king, but from myself. Whatever rags I wear into my tomb, I still shall wear unspotted my white plume. Cyrano was a lover. He loved greatly and wooed eloquently the beautiful Roxanne. But Cyrano felt the ugliness of his monstrous nose, and it was the handsome Christian who won her. We shall see now by what means. I must tell you this, Christian. Roxanne. She loved you. I'm dreaming. She wants you to write her. I pledged her I would ask you to write her. Uh, write her what? What? Odes, letters, sonnets, madrigal, ballad. Oh, but I cannot write. I'm no poet. <laughs> so handsome and so dumb. Dumb only to her. Dumb, I say. You have the exterior, the perfect binding. But the book is empty. What can I do? She'll expect wit, eloquence. If only I had your nose. I've traded for your tongue. Uh... A moment, sir. A notion. Apart, we are both useless, but together we might make one lover with a perfect nose and a perfect tongue. You, sir, will provide the exterior. That accidental arrangement of the features called beauty. And I, the voice, I will speak for you, think for you, write for you, make love for you. Why? Why? Because it gives me chance to speak my love. Relieved of this unsightly beak. How can you write for me who love her so? Poor driveling Adelpate. Sit down and rest your doubts. We that were never loved know best the epistolary arts. We're full of phrases hatched in our lonely nights of dreams and praises never heard. Our loves are like mad ghosts that unsuspected haunt the lovely coasts of Arcady. Yes, I will write quite well. And my reward? When she feels love still, though her sweet arms embrace you, yet my art, my words, my dreams will be that fill her heart. <laughs> Cyrano was a great soldier, but he's met his end in a common street accident. Christian had died in the wars, and the lovely Roxanne, whom Cyrano had won for Christian by his eloquence, whom Cyrano had loved so long and so hopelessly. Roxanne, all unknowing of his hurt, came to him in a convent garden in the last moments of his life. Roxanne. Cyrano. At last. But I'm late for our appointment. An unavoidable delay. An old friend. Met in the street. An old friend? Yes, an old boar whom I've often shaken off. But this time, I've promised to meet him in an hour. The leaves are falling. How gracefully the summertime resigns. Gay leaves. Dancing away to death. Cyrano, you're ill. Oh, an old wound. An old wound from the war. Yes, old wounds bring pain sometimes. I have one here in my heart. 
I keep his letter over it. His letter? Christian. His farewell. The tears and blood are faded on it. But the words still breathe. They were alive and always near me. I'd like to read it. Yes. Farewell, Roxanne. Farewell to love and you. Tonight I have a soldier's rendezvous to keep. Rebelliously I join the dead. Mourning to leave so much of love unsaid. How sweetly you read it. No more your eyes will light to meet the day. No more your lips will smile the dark away. No more your lips with mine will touch or wed to bring me ecstasy. Beyond what said. You're not looking. You're not reading. For the last time I remember now the small trick of your hand against your brow. Farewell. Farewell. Till I shall cease to be. Till that last moment. You remain with me. Yes, no. You wrote that. It was you. No, no. Yes, that letter and all the other letters. Then you wrote no, it. No, no. The words I love no, were yours. No, Roxanne. That tender mind I love. That deep soul that has haunted me with you. No. You loved me. No. Your no goes weaker. No, dear love. Sweet love. I, I did not love you. Oh, Sarah, no. There was no Christian. There was only a voice that spoke to me, and that was you. There was no Christian. These are your words. Even the tears are yours. The blood was his. Why did you keep your secret, Sir? No, why not have told me? Why not have let me know whom I love? I guessed it. It was madness, Sir. No, the doctor ordered you to your bed. I have had a previous engagement. Fool, madman. You killed yourself by coming here. What is that, Ray? What happened? Cyrano, what is it? On Saturday, a fat and ancient grenadier, while rescuing his foolish hat, was trampled by a horse was trampled by a horse who dreamed to die like Caesar was run over by a horse. Cyrano, live for me. Run over by a horse. Oh, fate! I'll save my little breath. Having botched all else, it is only fitting that you botch my death. I'm not to leave you but my epitaph. Here lies a nose that was too big by half. Here lies a moonstruck brawler, rhyming hack, a fool and fiddler, mastermind and jack of all trades. Here lies Hercules, the brute, a swooning Romeo without the knack of love, an Orpheus who loved to toot his songs against the wind. And two, a crack philosopher. In short, here lies now mute, a certain Cyrano de Bergerac, who was all these men, and nobody did boot. Dear Cyrano, rest now. Not here. I'll not die sitting down. I'll stand for death. Come forth, you snub-nosed skull. My hand still draws a sword. Come forth, eternal ghost. Was in lost causes that I love the most to fight. Oh. What devilish figures these that swarm at me? Look. Look, my enemies. I recognize them all. The smug, the snide, who live by lies and cringing override their betters. Here, violence is my sword again. Against all who act unjust to honest men. No quarter then. No quarter now. Attack! For here, as always, stands the You've taken all. The laurel and the rose. My little loot won by a thousand blows. But when all's gone, now when you strip me fine... One thing I'll hold aloft that still stays mine. I take it with me. And when I stand tonight before God's help, I'll show it clean and white. And bowing to him, sweep the doors of doom. 
With this I own unstained. With my white blue. I love but one man. And I lost him twice. Orson Welles will be back in a moment. But now let me ask every motorist in our audience, aren't you driving slower these days? Aren't you making fewer, shorter trips? That way your oil thins out and dirties quicker. What can follow? Wasted gasoline, worn engine parts, and finally a nasty breakdown. So it's mobile oil for you. Get your crankcase filled up full and frequently with oil you're sure of. Mobile oil flows freely, clings to every engine part. It works to keep your engine clean and operating in ace order. Mobile oil today is specially refined for wartime driving. To every man behind the wheel, we say, conserve your car, change oil often. Make it mobile oil, the world's best seller at the sign of the flying red horse. Time to say goodnight now, everybody. The translation of Cyrano I read from was written by Ben Hex. Our guest next week is Dennis Day. Please join us next Wednesday. Until then, my sponsors, the makers of mobile gas and mobile oil, and all of us in the Mercury Theater, remain as always obediently yours. (laughs) 